right on time. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Happy Sunday. Thanks for being here. All right. Wow. I just had a little short nap, so if uh, if uh, it takes me a minute to get going, that's why. <laughs> All right. Nicholas is here. Nick. Another Nick. Jorvin. Did I say it right? Jorvin. Bornstenson. Thanks for being here. How do you get special characters like that? How do you get the little O with the little with the little thingies? And then what is that thing in? Is a, is it a B in front of your first first letter of your last name? What is that? A B or a P? <clears throat> awesome. Well, thanks for being here. C Sharpworms here. Great. Timothy. Hello from Australia. Love love watching. Well, thanks. Not the first live for a change. Yay. <laughs> Not first, but live. Awesome, awesome. Father Time, oh, hey, I got something to show you. Finally catching 6 a.m. Yeah, you are up early in Australia, aren't you? I made it on the start. I know, Jerry. How you doing, man? Been a while. Hey, Jacob. Thanks for being here. All right. On the correct account now. Not been live for a while, so looking forward to Oh, good, Martin. Oh, good. Hey, so, uh, did I hit the mark? <laughs> How's it going, sir? Good enough, my main man. All right. Aloha from Maui vacation. Man, Michael, you lucky dog. Lucky dog. Time of the week that internet face talks to me. Nice. <laughs> Just ordered the Digiuno from China, so this is perfect. All right, excellent. Well, this is this is hopefully going to be pretty helpful. I, I hesitate sometimes to sort of do um really basic things because I feel like a lot of the Folks that are watching are are um, uh, experienced, but I think that there's it's time it's time to do something like this. I had a couple extra questions this this uh, last few days, and so I thought, oh, we gotta we gotta go over some of these things. Um, thanks for helping fix your power issue last week. It worked. Oh, good, Michael. I can't remember what it was. What was your power issue? Am I finally giving some good? Yes, yes, Edgar, I am. <laughs> All right, Barry's here too. Someday I'll get to the Netherlands, busy you guys. Let's see. Are you talking about the new energy uh, board? Oh, we can. Yeah, we, we should peek at it at least. What Martin's talking about is this. This is the new energy um, board in Home Assistant. This is the default. And if you will, if you put your, um, you know, some of your basic information in there, if you have an energy monitor and solar, It'll create this dashboard for you, which is pretty cool. I've always had my own, or not always, but for a long time I've had my own. Um, but this is this is kind of the new default. So it's very cool. If you didn't read um, Palace's mesh message about it, it's very cool. It's very good. Happy that they're doing this. This is what I've had for a long time. You can see right now we're like, can you can you believe that we're using thirteen points fourteen? Woo! Just hit fourteen kilowatts. <laughs> 14 kilowatts in my house right now. That's two air conditioning units, uh, at least two, two and a half refrigerators. My guess is because that's so high, that must be somebody else is doing something. So we've got an electric stove or electric oven. I mean, stoves gas, but the oven is electric. So it might be something that somebody's baking something in the electric oven. Could be that they're, uh, drying clothes. I think our dryer is electric also, or, uh, or something else, but anyways, that's a massive amount. That's a massive. <laughs> uh, how much of that is LED strips? Not enough. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, here we go. They have a detailed info on energy setup in the Home Assistant 21.8 update stream. Awesome. That's what they do the, the Wednesdays, the reveal days, right? I love those. Okay, here we go. Not good for your bank account. Now you need solar panels. That's right, you do. Okay, laser focus. Ready, ready, guys? Laser focus. Huh? <laughs> okay, no, for really, really. All right, let's 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 play around. So what I wanted to do, what I want to do here, is um, answer some answer some basic questions, and just go through a a simple setup of a of a WLED on we can do a variety of controllers but let's start with the um let's start with the 
Dig Uno, if I didn't just ruin this antenna by not being able to see it, I'm trying to push it on there. Oh, yep, there it goes. All right, we've got that antenna on there. Four watts for your refrigerator and freezer? Jeez, must be nice. Okay, so the other thing that uh, this is going to serve a couple purposes. One, um, you know, I know that there's some folks that, that are doing this for the first time still. And so they, they, it just helps. Uh, I, I haven't put out any new videos in a long time. So it helps to just kind of see somebody go through some basic parts of it. Um, it's also going to help me to kind of, I don't know about script, but at least get, get, uh, uh, collected what I want to do for the, for one of the next upcoming videos. Cause I am actually still going to make videos one of these days. Now that we got this house, this Hobbit house done. Oh, and I got something I got to show Father Time too. I'm trying to get this, trying to get these. Uh, I'm putting a Dig Uno together here because I uh, have so few of them right now. I have a new batch coming in, but I've had to salvage one here, and this is these pins are just barely lined up okay there it goes great great okay sweet so that's that so what we've got here I'll just show you please not led related today use the ask questions in the chat oh so if it's not led related use the ask and then the question in the chat that's right that's right because we're going to say focused like lasers <laughs> All right, focus, focus, um, camera, boom, sweet, wow, it actually even looks good, I wonder if it looks like it even maybe kept the settings, so the, um, there was an update for uh, Streamlabs OBS today, and it kind of looks like maybe it, uh, maybe it kept my camera settings from last time, which is great, because it like never does that. Okay, so this is Digino, and this is actually the external antenna version, just because that happens to be what I've got handy here. So the first thing that I will say, and I, and this is going to answer a question that I just got in Discord at 2.09 p.m. Um, the question is, how do I flash a new WL LED release on so onto one of these kinds of... Um, devices, right? So when you get one of these pre pre-built devices from me or from Quindor, it's Dig Uno, Dig Quad, uh Pixel Pro and who knows what else we'll come up with as time goes by. But when you get one of these, it comes with WLED on it. You don't need to connect it and flash it at all. Okay? If you want to update it, you do that over the air. That is the best way to do it. So what I'm going to do with this one is power it up. Okay. Well, it's going to connect it up to my little bench power supply here. And I want to connect it to the bench power supply just because it's easy, but also because it will give me the opportunity to see how much current it's drawing. Okay. All right, so we go ground in there. Easy. You don't need me to show you this probably, right? But ground in there. Positive in here. Now on the new versions of these, you don't need to specify 12 volts or five volts. It doesn't matter what it is. It will, it will send whatever you connect. It will send that straight onto the LEDs. So make sure if you've got five volt LEDs that you've got uh, a five volt power supply. If you've got 12 volt LEDs, you're gonna want a 12 volt power supply or your LEDs won't work very well. Um, and it will send just the few five volts to the controller that it needs. Okay, so that's that. Let's turn on the power supply to see what voltage it's set at. All right, it's already five volts, so that's great. Mm -mm. Okay, 
And there it goes. Boop. All right. So when it first comes on, when you first power it up, you get two little lights. These are the, this is the new version. There used to be like if you had one of these old uh, D1 minis, it would have a blue light. But this has an orange light here and an orange light on the board. Okay. So the first thing you need to do, or the next thing to do, I guess, is to go to your Wi-Fi networks and see if you get a new one popped up that says WLED AP. Oops. Right there. WLED AP. Mine's going to probably say, oh, I can't connect. Oh, oh. and I'm going to have to restart it a couple times. And it's going to be kind of a pain in the butt because it just always does this to me. But it will work eventually. Orange status lights everywhere. All right, Quindos here, guys. That's good. That's good news. Gosh, the Wi-Fi uh, connecting, still trying to connect. It's probably not going to connect. I'm going to have to turn it off, turn it back on. Most people probably don't have this issue. I still don't know why this is this way. Um, it's just me. It's not, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> Live TV, folks. This is how it goes. Live TV. That's right. We're doing it on the fly. We're doing it live. You monitor your UPS and home system. Oh, awesome. I need a UPS. Pfft. Can't connect. See? I knew it would say that. Usually if I get it right away, it'll work. <laughs> yes, Sir Good Enough sure does have a YouTube channel. He does good stuff. That's a smart dude there, Sir Goodenough. He is a smart dude. Should totally listen to him. All right. I guess. I can't go off this. It'll get all messed up. <clears throat> Man. Why does it hate me? Cannot connect. Trying it again. Just going to keep on trying. Now, I wonder if you go to the WLED app, it's not going to find, it's not going to find brand new stuff, right? Is it? No. Mm-hmm. I don't know why it does this. I wish I knew. I wish one day I could get this figured out. Because this is kind of a pain when I have to try and start a new controller. Oh, oh, looks like my phone connected to it. Okay. So we're going to do, we're going to use that connection instead. All right. So here we go. We're going to do it this way. We're doing it live. Mm hmm. <laughs> I think there's that, where's that mirror thing I used to use? I haven't used it in forever. Was this a power mirror? Did it use Bluetooth? I think it did. Let's hope it does. Remind me later. If it uses the Wi-Fi, we're screwed. I thought it used Bluetooth, but maybe it doesn't. Ay, 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 ay. Live TV. Okay. <clears throat> well, we're gonna do it this way. <laughs> there it is. Okay. So it's on my phone. Whatever. Fine. Um, <clears throat> so you can do this first thing if you want to. You can go to the controls, okay? Then config and security and updates. So to answer that question of, oh, I guess this isn't gonna work very well. 
this this would work if it was on your computer and you had downloaded the up the the latest version of WLED. This already has the latest version. It's 12, right? There it is. So you don't need to update this particular one. Um, but this is where you do it. So I would recommend you just do it this way. Um, you avoid the possibility of not having drivers on your computer or the USB cable not being right or whatever else. Although it is pretty awesome now that you can go to install. I'm going to go this way here. You can go to this install WLED.me and install this way. That's pretty cool. It works pretty well. But you still need to have the right drivers uh, installed on your computer. Um, so back to this. But so my, my point for showing this is that you don't have to flash WLED on these controllers. If you get a Digino or a DigQuad or a Pixel Pro or whatever else we come up with, if we're selling it to you, me, Quindor, it's going to have, unless you've, unless, unless it specifically says it doesn't, something that we do, we have been selling the ESP 32s without anything on them. But unless it specifically says it doesn't have something on it, it has something on it. Right? It has WLED. And when you first start it up or, or once you've got it running like this, powered up, you can update the software right here. So what you would do is download the latest version, which I believe it gives you the opportunity to do right here, I think, with the uh, version number, the WLED right there lets you do that. Um, and then you, or you go to manual update here and then choose the file. Oh, there it tells you download the latest binary. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't know that would do that. That's great. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Back up, back up. Back up, back up. Oh, crap. Now we lost it. Now we lost the WLED AP. Oh, it's still going to work. Yay. Oh, good. Okay. Anyways, so to the controls, config, <clears throat> security and updates. If you go to this updates, OTA, manual OTA update page, you can download the latest binary right there. It says download latest binary. I know this is great, great video. But anyways, you can download the latest binary. Once you've already got it, once you've got it downloaded, you do a choose file, select that binary that you downloaded and update. Okay. So if you want to update to the latest version, just do this. Just do this. If for some reason it will connect and connect the wires, we'll be forced to connect to serial console to be able to change the rc.local file. So it's using the modified Mio client file. I have no idea what that means. Oh, you're a Quara hub. Okay. Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So now, LEDFX experts on Doc's Discord. Oh, nice. Okay. So that's that. Now, I don't want to do that in this particular case. What I want to do here is uh, I do want to set it up so that it goes to my Wi Fi network. All right, so we're going to go to Wi-Fi setup and I'm going to put in my uh, Wi-Fi information so that this will connect to my network. Now, this brings up another problem that a lot of people have. A lot of people say, not a lot, but some some folks definitely have the problem of uh, they come to this point, they put in their SSID and password, and then it never connects to their network. Quindor and I talked about it. I've asked a couple other people too. What? Why would that be? What would what would happen? And I know that there was a time when there was a problem. Yep, everybody remember my Wi-Fi password? You've got it all. <laughs> um, there was a time where if you had special characters uh, in your password for your home Wi-Fi, it wouldn't work with WLED. I thought that got resolved. I thought that they fixed that. I thought um, Christian and the, and the uh, you know, Air Cookie, the WLED guy, and others that have contributed, I thought they fixed that. But it's also possible that when you put it in, especially if you're like copying and pasting, that maybe you maybe it adds a space, a blank space at the end of the password. So that may be it. Um, 
I don't know. It also may be a router problem. Maybe the router's uh, limiting, you know, adding certain things to the network. Maybe you've got some kind of security stuff going. Security. Pfft. Ha. Lame. <laughs> anyway. All right. Um, but uh, those are a couple things to check. So check the password. Um, you know, I, I, there's there's very few reasons why it, if you've got the username and password connected it, that it wouldn't connect. Oh, the other the other big one, and this is probably a, a common one, is the whole five gigahertz versus two point four gigahertz issue. So all of these controllers only work on two point four gigahertz Wi-Fi. Most of us now at this point have five gigahertz Wi-Fi and two point four gigahertz or two point four and five whatever. I just feel like most of our devices, like our, our, our phones and our tablets and stuff, they're all going to use the five gigahertz, but these old controllers, like old controllers, but these, these low power kind of cheap controllers, they are going to use the 2.4 still. So if you have two net Wi-Fi networks, maybe you have two different names and passwords. If one of them is, is for, is five gigahertz and one's 2.4, make sure you use the 2.4 on this. If you have one name for both. So it's the same name and the same password for both. The router should figure that out and be able to connect. But I can't say that's going to always be the thing, right? Wi-Fi 6. Oh, gosh. And that too now. <laughs> if you have unified devices, disable Wi-Fi roaming. There's a good, there's a good, we're going to get right there too. Ikafar, you are so right about that. Okay. So once we have, thank you very much for subscribing. UK Heli Pilot. How's it going, man? How's it going? Um, and turn off the smart Wi-Fi that switch devices between 2.4 and 5 by itself. Don't let it do that by itself. Is that what you're saying? It, it does. They do a bad job generally. I bet they do. I bet they do. Channel 4 in the UK TV. Oh, I don't. Okay. So let's, let's look at this. Uh, let's look at this again. Oh, there's my kids. Yay, kids. All right. So we're here on this. We're going to go now to WLED, the app. Okay. This is the easiest way. You, if, you're a, if you're a whiz with your router and you can get in your router and you can find IP addresses, then great. Do that. If, um, if not, the app will do it for you. Okay. Once you have your WLED controller connected to your home Wi-Fi network, you can go to the WLED app, Android or iPhone, click the plus, click discover lights. All right, mine says it found a bunch. So I'm gonna now hit the check mark and I'm gonna go see what it found. This one, this brand new one here, this says WLED and it's got the IP address 192.168.1.38. That I am 99% sure is this brand new controller here, okay? I'm 99% sure. Now, I don't have any lights hooked up to this yet, so I can't say for sure um, because I can't control anything on there yet, but that's what I'm betting. So now I can go up here. Now that I know the IP address, I could go right into it here and we could start controlling it right here. If I had lights connected to it, this would start working. And that's, this is so nice. It's so easy to connect to these when you do it this way. Um, but I like to do it on the computer and you guys are watching on my, my screen. My computer screen is e easier to see than this phone. So we're going to go there. All right. So that IP address was going back up here. 192. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How can I help you? 19238 was the IP address, right? Bum, bada, bum. Okay. Here's the, here it is right here. Great. When you're on a computer, I, Highly recommend using PC mode. It just makes it so easy to see so many things all at the same time. I saw somebody do a subscribe thing flash by there and I didn't see who it was, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll do a flying fat unicorn for you. Uh, okay. Once you get in here, let's do a couple more things. Okay. Once you get to this point where you've got the IP address, it's connected to your home network. You've got the IP address. You're looking at the controller uh, in all its glory. Let's go into the config and let's do a few things. Okay. Let's do a few things. All right. Wi-Fi setup. We already did this. Um, I like to give it a specific name for this, for the dot local. Let's see if I can zoom in. No, I can. So you guys can see nice and good. All right. I, I like to do this uh, with a, uh, uh, give it a name. 
so that you can easily connect to it if your dot local stuff works, which mine does like half the time, maybe. <laughs> but this, just give it a name uh, that is something that you recognize. So let's say we're going to put this one. Um, I don't know where we're going to put this one. What are we going to do with this one? Probably nothing really, but let's just pretend that it's going to be a tree. Okay, so it's going to go on a tree. Um, oh no, these are going to be fairy lights. So this will, we'll, we'll do, we'll do, we'll call it uh, fairy or we'll call it pixie, pixie, pixie lights. There we go. So wled pixie.local. That's what this one will be called for me. If I didn't want to use the IP address, I could use wled pixie.local and it should pull up. Okay. Um, if it loses connection, if it, if it loses connection to the network, then it will start to broadcast its access point again. I think it's also helpful if you put a name in here that also corresponds to the name you have up here so that if one of them is not connecting and it's broadcasting its access point, you can see which access point or which controller it is because the access point name represents the controller. So I'm going to put Pixie in here as well. Okay. So now if this thing disconnects from my network, it will broadcast its access point and I will know, oh, the Pixie controller is broadcasting its access point, it has for some reason lost connection to the network. Okay, great. All right, uh, do not, don't change the AP password. Um, uh, and this, this just makes it, I think it, this leaves it as uh, WLED1234. Oh, that was the part I didn't put in. Um, yeah, a lot of WLED videos lately. It is, it is, the, it is that time of year, it is that time of year. Um, actually, it's always that time of year. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, I didn't, because I've done, I've connected so many WLED controllers when the Wi-Fi, when I was connecting to the WLED access point Wi-Fi network, I didn't have to put the password in because it has saved the password for me on my, all my devices because I've done it so many times, saved it over the time, but it's WLED one, two, three, four. And that's what it is here. So if this does disconnect and you need to reconnect to a WLED pixie, uh, it's going to be WLED one, two, three, four, lowercase. All right. Uh, you can do, you can change the channel here. You can give it some instructions like, uh, app, app AP opens when after no connection, after boot, that's when it's going to open the access point. You can set it to never, you can set it to always, you can set it so that it only works in access point mode. This would be really good if you were like doing it. Um, I wouldn't say a public place maybe, but maybe a public place or something like your car. If you're putting this in your car or something and you don't have a Wi-Fi router for it to connect to. In order to connect to it and change it, you've got to connect to it directly. You can set it to always, and it will always broadcast the access point, which it will do anyways if you don't connect it to a router. But you can you get a little bit of control there. And then this is what somebody was talking about. If you, I don't remember who it was that said it, but if you have, a, I don't know if it's only Unify, but disable Wi-Fi sleep, I do turn this on every time because if they disconnect, then sometimes power cycling them is what you have to do. You can maybe connect to the access point, but it's just easy this way. Just disable Wi-Fi sleep and then it stays connected to your network. Sound okay? Uh, could you use the access point method to reconnect to a new router if you change the ISP? Yes, Tony, yes. That's, in fact, that's a, that's a, a nice backup. That's why you really don't wanna set this to never. If you set this to never, then even if it can't connect to your network, like say you change your router, like that, that's your example, right? You change your internet service provider, you change your router or something, and then it's going to uh, try and connect um, and it's it's not going to have the same. If it has the same user and password, it the IP address doesn't have to be static. So you don't have to set the IP address here. You can let the router decide the IP address. But um, if you change routers uh, and you don't set this to, you know, reconnect or to, to rebroadcast the access point at some point, if you don't change this. Um, if you, if you change this to never, you're going to lose it. It's not going to, you're going to have to manually flash it after that. Okay. Why changing the ISP has to do with your network. Oh, some people, if they provide the router. Yeah. Yeah. If they provide the router. Hola from Guanajuato. Guanajuato. Luis, how's it going? Guanajuato. I said it right, didn't I? You need to use the console connection if you have set it to never. Oh, no, 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 that was a thing. Okay. Anyways, we're going to save that. So now that we've changed that name to a couple things, we're going to save it. It's going to like reboot real quick, reconnect to my network, hopefully. Otherwise, this will be a very short stream. 
that was a lot more explanation than I meant to get into on the access point stuff, but it's it's important. People get it, people get hung up on it. So if it's like Tasmoda RX and TX pins, oh, I don't know if it has a console that you can communicate with. I'm not sure about that. Okay, it's back. Now, oh, yeah. Now we're gonna go back to config. Okay. So that was Wi-Fi setup. So that's all stuff we need to change Wi-Fi setup. LED preferences. Okay, this hangs up a lot of people as well. So pay attention here. Pay attention. Pay attention. Um, okay, total LED count. I've had people say, oh, I hook up, you know, 100 LEDs and only 30 of them come on. Well, this is why. You have to set your total LED count right here to whatever your actual total LED count is. If you're connecting 250 LEDs to this, then you need to put this at 250 LEDs because it will only, it will only control the number of LEDs that you put in here. So in this case, we're going to use one of these uh, fairy light strings. So we're going to set this to 50 because there are 50 LEDs in there. Okay. Uh, it, this gives you a nice recommended power supply. Okay, great. This says, you know, three amp power supply. You don't, this, especially with these little pixie lights, it's not going to use that much. Uh, as it says here, for most effects, one amp is enough. Okay, uh, we're gonna we're gonna actually measure how many how much it uses. Right now, it's using 0.16 amps, so it's just con it's just connected the controller. There's no uh, LEDs connected to it right now, but it is using 0.16 amps. I'm looking at it on my bench power supply. Okay, all right. Now this hangs some people up, and we actually had a really interesting problem the other day that somebody came to me with that we solved um, with this automatic brightness limiter. So what this is, is a software current control. Okay. There's nothing on the did you know, or did quad or pixel pro that measures the current that the, that the lights are consuming, but it can calculate WLED can calculate what it's probably using based on the number of LEDs and the type of LEDs and the effect and color and effect that you use. So right now it is set to not allow the lights to draw more than 0.85 amps, right? 850 milliamps, 0 0.85 amps. That's pretty dim. If you set this to say 400, you're putting 400 lights on this. If you don't change this, they'll be really dim. And you kind of be like, geez, I thought these lights would be brighter. This uh, is is a, a, a safety. It's kind of like an, a, a software, not a fuse exactly, but you know, something like that. It's a current limiter that's built in the software. What you want to set it to generally is something about the level of your power supply. So if you were going to hook up a three amp power supply here, you might want to set this to something just below that three amps. So you don't overwork your power supply cause a big old mess, fire, smoke, heat, whatever. So set it to something just below your power supply. So in that case, if we were using a three amp power supply, we would set it to say, I don't know, whatever, 280 or two, 2,800 uh, milliamps, something like that. If you go real high, it gives you this awesome warning. <laughs> your power supply supplies a high current to improve the safety of your setup. Please use thick cables multiple power injection points, which is the same as using thick cables because you're just multiplying the, the amount of uh, copper that the current can pass through or a fuse and or a fuse. Okay. So we're not going to do that. If we had a three amp power supply and tiny wires and we set this to, to this, we might as well just turn it off, which you can do, but I would not recommend turning it off. Just set it to something that's high ish like that. We're going to set it to a thousand just cause. Okay. And we're going to use, we're going to play around with using a little tiny uh, power supply that because um, these don't aren't going to draw very much. But anyways, that's that point. So that's what that does. Don't forget to address it if you're having problems. The power is too high. The power is too high. Smoke is good, Sir Goodenough says. It's like spreading magic. It's like magic. <laughs> All right. Um, mm, 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 mm. Uh, okay. So Next part of this um, brightness limiter is this max voltage. So what this tells you, or the, not max voltage, the max current for a single LED. This gives you the option of telling WLED what kind of 
pixels or what kind of LEDs you're using so that it can make that calculation. Okay. It, it can make this calculation of what it, of what current draw you're probably going to get uh, based on what um, you set in here. All right. So you could set if the default is the highest. So I've, I have yet to find honestly a, an LED, a pixel like this, an RGB pixel that even on white max brightness, that's going to use 55 milliamps. But that keeps you safe, right? That's like the most conservative you can do is just leave it at this. In, in my case with these little guys, I, this is like half, this, these are WS 2812s, but they are like half the current draw of, of the bigger ones. So you would be very safe to use this 35 milliamps. But depending on what you're doing, you could use 12 volts, which sets it to 30 milliamps, which they're going to be even less than that probably. And then this gives you now the option of WS2815, and it says those are only going to use 12 milliamps. That's really low. I didn't realize they were that uh, low power consumption. But is that because they're also 12 volts? I think they're also 12 volts. Or custom, you could say, oh, I think my LEDs are better. They're only going to take whatever, 20 milliamps, right? Do you put that in there? That's my rule of thumb. Please look at my comment. Okay, 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 okay. Let's see. What did you say, Edgar? What did you say? I prefer to set a static IP address when I have to reset my router or get a new one or whatever. Longest have the same SSIP password. It works by itself. Is that it? Was that, the, was that it, Edgar? No, something else. Doc, I will set the amp limiter to the limit of your wire. Power supply won't fail, but the wire will catch fire. Yeah, sure. The most, I think most of us aren't like... What do you, what do you recommend then, Edgar? Let's, let's talk about that for a second, because if like, what, what kind of wire are you using? The, the, the amp ratings of wires are generally really conservative, I think. Um, so let's see, I have, I had a, I had a decent link to a, uh, to a, a page of, I think it was just a wiki, Wikipedia entry that tells you about that because you're right. You, you, you want to, you want to make sure that you're not going to overdo your wire, um, because your wire will melt and catch fire. Um, maybe your power supply, uh, won't, uh, start on fire, but if you overdid your wire, it will. Where am I looking? There it is. Um, I think if, as long if you're using like 20, but I guess it, let's look at it. Let's look at it because if Edgar is totally right, if you're using uh, really small wires, you could get yourself into a world of hurt if you uh, draw more current through your wires than what they are intended to supply. So here's a whole fun calculation of what to do with how much current can your wire carry. All right. And based on the resistance, based on the size of the wire. So here we go. Let's look at this. Uh, this is one of the few charts that I found that actually goes to wire this small. Wow, I swear I'm making it, it's really big on my screen, but it's not so big for you guys. Ampacity at temperature rating. Okay, so this is what we're gonna wanna look at now. This is saying if, you, if you're okay with the wire getting up to 60C, which is pretty freaking hot, but if you're okay with it getting up to 60 C, then this, this is the current that you can use. Okay. So this column over here. So say you've got a, uh, 20 gauge wire. Here's 20 gauge wire. They're saying five amps, 20 gauge wire with five amps running through it. They're saying is going to be, is going to get pretty hot. Or if the wire is that hot, you can safely run five amps through it. If you are okay with it getting hotter, 75 C, you can run 11 amps through it. So if you have 20 gauge wire, you know, five amps is kind of a lot, honestly, five amps is a lot of, it's a lot of LEDs, but if you have multiple strings of 20 and 20 is pretty small wire. Um, so you can use this now where this really, really matters, especially for like what Edgar's saying, where this really, really matters is if you're using like jumpers because jumper wires are like what, 24, 20, 26, you know, they're really small. So you can, you can overpower these, the jumper wires pretty easily. Length counts too. Okay. Length counts too. I don't remember what, I don't know what the, they have for length here. Area, uh, length specific resistance. 
per this is a per meter per foot. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I think. I don't know what it's uh, the length. The length isn't as important as the diameter of the wire, right? But but the length matters too. You're right. It's a lot to consider because longer the wire, the higher amps is consumed. Yep. Uh, or the hotter it gets at the same number of amps. Ooh, and then this is Quindor's. I'm so glad you did that, Quindor. Thank you. This is, is this yours? Oh, no, this is one. This is a different one. Oh, that's nice. Diameter area. What's this? So you can put in here the type of wire. I guess this resistivity is a, is a constant. Wire diameter. So you put that in. Here's your length. There we go. One-way length. The type of current, because that's going to matter also. The volts, okay, great. Uh, oh, this is a voltage, this is a voltage drop calculator, right? Wire resistance. Wire gauge calculator, there it is. Wire gauge calculator. Just trying to see how this thing works. We say 20. I want to see if it's going to give us the same thing. So I don't have to put that. I don't want to put the diameter in. I want that thing to figure it out by itself. Resistance per thousand feet, per thousand meters. It's not, it's not giving you a recommended max current. Right? Wire resistance wire diameter, something like that. So you say you want, say you want six amps of five volts for 16 feet. You can calculate what your, what your wire size needs to be. Well, six amp, five volts for 16 feet. Let's see. So that's, was that on the first one? That's, that's the voltage drop calculator. Ooh, cool. Let's see. So if you want I'm trying to figure out where that goes in. If you want because here you have to specify what this is, right? If you're going five volts, DC, 15 feet, calculate. But it doesn't, it doesn't tell you your wire gauge, what wire gauge you want. Under a 10% drop. That's less than a 10% drop. Max current is only for safety, not what you actually need to run the LEDs. True. Diameter calculator. Ah. Just let it burn. <laughs> okay. Um, no, this is this is important stuff, and you do want to make sure that you're that you're not trying to run too much current through a too small wire, which is the which is the uh, the the point here. Um, if I put eighteen back in there, what does that do? Oh, I see. You put 18 here and then you just make sure that this is not over 10. So, okay, you could say, well, then what if I was using a 20 amp, a 20 gauge wire, right? Oh, uh, now it's only six. Okay, so I could use, uh, what if I was using a 24? Oh, now I'm at 15% drop, right? Okay, so I see what you're saying. Gotcha. Okay. Jordan's birthday. Jordan's birthday? What? And Athemi's birthday? Happy birthday, guys. Let's do unicorns. We're distracted right now for sure. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is related. This is related, right? Okay. Um, I'm going to go with this. I'm going to use the custom in this case. I'm going to use custom because I've got these little tiny guys. I'm going to use custom and we're going to do the 20 amps and we're going to measure it. We, we've got the, we've got the tools. We've got the ability. We're going to measure it. Okay. So there we go. We're going to, we're going to leave that at that for now. We're going to measure it and then we can maybe adjust it if we wanted to afterwards. Okay. Hardware setup. This is where you get to tell it what kind of LEDs you have. In most cases, you're not going to need to change it. WS28 one something usually 11 or 12, um, th then there's the others you could pick from. And that's great. I don't usually change it. This matters a lot because, in fact, I'm using a Dig, 
Uno with an ESP32. So in this case, I do need to change this, don't I? I'm pretty sure I need to change this. Don't I need to change that to 16? I'm trying to remember. Because this is an ESP32, I think I do need to change that to 16. Do, 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 do. I'm going to change it to 16. I'm trying to remember on this. I'm pretty sure I do. Okay. Um, so that's important. I think I would have thought I thought that was set to what it was, 16 and 3 if I want the second one, right? Lay your life without medicine to jump all over stuff. <laughs> okay. Um, if I wanted to set two, this is a dig uno, so I could set another output as pin three. And anything beyond LED 50 would be coming out of that, um, would be coming out of that uh, uh, second pin. I'm not going to do that in this particular case, but you can do that there. This one is important. This, if you're, especially if you're using, well, either one, right? Because these have a button on them now too, this, the ESP, um, the Quindor ESP32. If you want the button on the board here, or if you've got one of our Pixel Pros and you want to use the button on there, you've got to set this to a certain pin to be able to use the button as a button. We really need to focus light to work. Focus, focus. <laughs> this pin? Sorry, sir, good enough. I'm trying to figure out what you're asking. Okay. This pin is the LED output pin. Sorry. This is the LED output pin. So if you're using an ESP8266 on a Digi Uno or Quad, then you would set that to two. Uh, if you're just using a Node MCU or whatever, you could set it to whatever you want, but two is a good one. And the Pixel Pro, the default is two. But on the Unos and Quads, if you're using an ESP32, which is all the new ones, come with an ESP32 then this you want to set to 16. True that? Okay. No, no, I don't want you to distract. I want you to help me focus. You did a great job of helping me focus. <laughs> but you really need the focus light to work. Like the light to come on and say, Z's focus, that light. <laughs> um, okay, I want to do this, uh, something that I haven't done before. But what I want to do is I want to set a relay on this one. I want to set a relay on this one. So, Quindor, what's the best pin to use? I could use pin three, right? I could use pin three, um, but I know you've got other pins here on the board. So let's see what other pins you got here on the, yeah, the page light. Yeah, we've, we, we, we do need to get back to making the page light work again. All right, so you have which pins available here, so. So you got five volts in ground right there. And then what is right next to it? That's the AO pin. And you've got Q3 and Q4. Which, what pins are Q3 and Q4? If you don't know, you can go to the pinout guide. <laughs> I know if I stalled long enough that Quindor would post the, the page that I need. <laughs> tequila, a tequila El Patron shot to focus better. Oh my gosh. That would not help me focus. All right. Uh, so Q3 and Q4. So there's GPIO 2, GPIO 32. Okay. No, wait. GPIO 12. What did I say it was? 2 and 3? Two, 2 and 3, I think. Uh, Q4 is 32. We're going to use Q4. Yeah, we're going to use Q4. Oh, wait, Q1 and Q2 are over here. Is that, the, is that 5 volts? I want to use 5 volts there. Okay, oh, oh, there's 5 volts. There's ground. 3 volts. Yeah, Q4 or Q3 I could use. So GPIO 2, which I'm not going to, well, I could, in this case, I could use it with the ESP32, but I'm going to use GPIO 32 for Q4. 
Okay. So I'm going to connect a need a kamikaze to focus. <laughs> I need a monster. That will not help me focus. Um, all right. So back to this. So what I did there was just sort out what pins were available on the Dig Uno. So the relay pin that I'm going to use is going to be pin 32, GPIO 32. Okay. So at some point before we're all done today, I will connect a relay to this. It smells like somebody's cooking popcorn. But you can still have the five volt relay module to react to three volt trigger voltage. Yeah. I, but uh, do you need, um, I guess on the board that I have, the, the relay board I'm going to grab, I think I... I think it works with five volts. Anyways. All right. DigQuad is a special 1QR terminal, which does do five volt GPIO. Oh, I see what you're saying. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, the relays, the relays can do three volt. Um, the signal can just be three volts. But the the power, like the to power the coil on the relay, do you need five usually? Maybe not. I hate the smell of popcorn when I'm playing with electronics, right? I'm here playing with electronics. I got this board on my desk and I'm kind of wiggling it around and stuff. And I smell popcorn, which could very easily be confused for, you know, a melting resistor or something. <laughs> ah, how do I know what version did you know board I have? Is it written on the board? That is a good question. And it is written on the board. The, the biggest, easiest way to do it is um, basically when you bought it. Uh, if you, if you bought it, well, since when, Quindor, since before... March of this year, then it's a the first version. And if it's after March of this year, it's the second version, something like that. Best tequila in the world, gifted tequila. Oh, tequila. All right. Anyways, here we go. So we're going to do a relay. We're going to set a relay on it eventually. So that's why I did that. And the reason you would want to have a relay, somebody's probably saying, why would you want a relay? The reason you would want to have a relay is if you wanted to have the Wi-Fi board powered up, have the Wi-Fi board powered up, but have the big power supply that goes to the LEDs not running all the time, you could set the power to that Wi-Fi board, or sorry, Wi-Fi board, to that big LED power supply. You could set it to be controlled by this relay. So that's what we'll do. We'll, we'll make it so that we've got power going to our, our LED control board, which is a very small amount of power. But then our LED control board can turn on the power supply that really provides the juice for the LEDs. Okay. So that's useful. I, I, that's been a feature of a WLED for a bit. I haven't played with it before. So we're going to play it. Uh, we're going to play it. Uh, we're going to play with it today. All right. Uh, and then there's a couple other settings here. You can apply presets after you boot, blah, 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 transition, timed, advanced. These are actually nothing I would change generally on this. Okay. So that was a lot of stuff um, for the LED preferences. I hope that uh, we got most of the questions answered and, and didn't cause too much confusion. A couple other things we'll play with here. Server description. This is how uh, this controller will sort of announce itself, okay, uh, to the app and such. So we are going to call it Pixie. Pixie. Okay. Send and receive. We're not going to play with that right now. We're going to just leave the UI stuff the same. Although I will, I do really like this random um, background image. It just goes to this pick some photos thing on the interwebs and it grabs a random picture uh, to use as the background. I, I think that's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm grateful for that. So we'll do that and we're going to save it. When it goes back to the UI, now we're going to have this cool background, whatever, right? we got some Amish kids and, you know, wh whatever's going on back there. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Um, but then it says WLED Pixie over here. Okay. So that's, and then when we look at it in the app, it will also now say WLED Pixie instead of um, just WLED. Okay. So that's a good way to, to tell you which um, controller is which. Okay. Oh, what this one's doing, this is actually grabbing all the other instances that I currently have connected, or at least the, what it, the ones it, it knows about. Um, so I also have my audio reactive. I have some a string of LEDs up here on a strip. So if you have multiples, it almost acts like the app where it will uh, detect other instances of WLED and um, give you the opportunity to very quickly switch to uh, switch to that one, right? So we go back to nodes. I can now switch back and forth between 
those two pretty quickly. So if you have a bunch of them, that's a great, great way to switch back and forth between them. Okay. And there's my random background switching every time. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. All right. Uh, I'll just save the waste of one milliamp each pixel if you, when they're off, right? Yep. Yeah. It uses a lot of power and you know, a lot of those big power supplies, they have fans in them. And I, ha I had to buy a new power supply for mine that have been on my house for four years finally. And I never really turned it off. It's just been, it's been a, you know, it's a cheap, uh, Altuve or something power supply that I bought on Amazon for like $20 four and a half years ago. And it's been running almost constantly ever since. And I could hear the fans start to make like a bad noise a couple months ago. And now it just randomly works and doesn't work. So anyways, it's good to turn it off, right? Uh, is it possible to get WLED on a, on a bot LED wire controller power already assembled? Ooh. No, not right now. Not right now. It's not Oni. It's not. Um, I don't know if we'll get there someday or not. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're talking about something that basically you'd buy, uh, you know, like Amazon where it's connected to the strip and stuff. We're not there right now. Um, this is still a bit of a DIY thing, you know, and I think it probably always will be, uh, somewhat DIY ish, uh, not a hundred percent plug and play, but we try and, we try and, uh, encourage folks to branch out. Maybe you haven't played with electronics like this before, but this is an opportunity to figure out that, Hey, I can do this. You know, it's not so scary. I can, I can, I can play with electrons and, and screw things together and twist some wires up and it's going to be okay. Right. Uh, is it possible to power a controller and a small amount of LED strips off of a battery pack? Yes, Pablo. It's definitely possible to power them off a battery pack. The thing, the uh, the, the trick about that is they do consume a fair amount of power. Uh, and so your battery pack might not last very long or you're going to want some way to recharge it. So if it's a battery pack and a solar panel and a, and a small number of LEDs, yeah, you should be able to do that. Just figure out your, so, so you say 30, uh, 30 LEDs. Um, and it's easy with, yeah, like, uh, like Ofer says, if you're using five volt LEDs, it's very easy to, cause we have a lot of five volt phone charging battery packs out there. But, uh, if you, if you want, say you've got a, a battery pack that's, or a, a string of LEDs, if there's 0.2, um, or 0 0.02 amps per LED and you've got 30, what's that going to be? 0.6 amps? Something like that. Let's just say 10 and make it 0.2 amps. Yeah, 0.6 amps. So 0.6 amps. So 600 milliamps. So if you have a, uh, say you have a 6,000, it would be a 6,000 milliamp hour battery, which would be a pretty big one. You would be able to run it for 10 hours before it's dead. You, did you see that math? Did you see the, did you smell the smoke when I was doing that math in my head? <laughs> 13 plug and play. It's so easy to get nice lights. That's true. The plug and play stuff yeah, is pretty cheap. Um, I think part of it is, um, well, their scale, you know, they're manufacturing, we're manufacturing a lot, but not as many as some of these pixel, pixel controller, um, folks are, but also the quality is much better on these, to be honest. It, you know, you can, you can get like some of these, um, what is it? The, the magic light E 108 and some of these other off the, off the shelf, pixel controllers that do a decent job of controlling, uh, um, strings of, of RGB LEDs, but they're very limited in what you can change. They don't have, they generally don't have a logic level shifter. So you've got to keep that controller pretty close to the LED strip. Um, the interface, the user interface could be good, could be bad. You, you're probably going to be pretty limited on the effects you can do. And you're certainly going to be limited on the expansion ability. So if it comes with a strip of if it comes with a strip of, uh, you know, 50 or a hundred LEDs in, in most cases, you're not going to be able to expand that. You're going to need a second controller if you want to, but I'm not saying they're bad. They're great. They, they work and I encourage you to use them and you can, uh, put WLED on some of those controllers, not all of them, but some of them you can anyways. And then you get some of that benefit. So no fuse, reverse polarity protection, injection effects, all those things, home integration. Yeah. There's a lot of things you're missing if you go with the, um, with those, but they're a great start. I would, I, I'm, I would encourage you to, to get it and to play with it. 
And I bet you before too long, you'll want to flash it with WLED. <laughs> and then you'll go, oh, I wish I could do this. And then you'll, you'll end up with a, did you know or something? <laughs> Plug and pray. That should be the name of the channel. Okay. So where are we at? We were in config. We did user interfaces. We're not going to play with sync interfaces right now. Um, that's just other ways to uh, control it with, um, you know, control lights, uh, uh, controllers, uh, all doing the same thing, even though they're separate controllers, stuff like that. Time in macros. I do like to tell people to go in here and, and, and set your um, time zone and stuff. Um, set your time zone, get an NTP server time. Um, you don't have to do anything with any of these other preset stuff, but just set that for now. Okay. And then again, this was back to the uh, fact, if you wanted to update it or if you wanted to change it, say you wanted to put on the audio reactive or whatever, you go to manual update here. It will tell you, this will send you to the page to, to grab the latest binary. And here's a beta version. So we could grab the beta and see what, see what that does. Um, version highlights, web sockets, various fixes and improvements. If you use the same WD light together simultaneously, you will instantly see each other's changes. Oh, cool. Hmm. All right. That sounds like a fun one, but I'll wait till it's out of beta. Anyways, you would download it and then just choose the file here from whatever, wherever you downloaded it and upload it. So when somebody asks, and this was a question from Poof on Discord, he says, how do I update it? How do I update it? Does it have a bootloader? Yes. All you have to do is this. So get connected to it, go into the uh, controls, the software update page and manually update over the air. Okay. Sarai, sarai. <laughs> okay. Now let's do some, let's do some actual connecting and controlling of the pixels. Okay. We've done a lot of the basic software stuff. Let's do some actual connecting and controlling of the pixels. So I have here, I have here. Uh, one of these strings of pixie lights, uh, pixie lights, fairy lights, call them what you will. They're these cool little, uh, small WS2812 lights with a very, very thin wire in between them. It's like a little, I mean, it's basically just a, a wire plus like some lacquer or something on the top of it. Uh, da, 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 da. these will often, but not in this case, come with a, something you can plug in there to plug into here. So let's get one. This guy. So the, a lot of times a string of LEDs will come with something like this. Um, you can use this to connect to the controller and then you can plug that into the beginning of the strip of LEDs. This is where, actually, that's where we'll put the, um, that's where we'll put the, we can put the relay, uh, right on one of those if we wanted to. Okay. All right. So we're going to power down the did you know, Boom. and we're going to connect the, we're going to connect this guy to it. Okay. So to do that, we got to take the controller off here. Now, some of you, some people have uh, written to me too and said, oh no, I, I took the, the controller off the top and it broke. Like this thing, this thing got lost. This, uh, this other pin thing here, it didn't get lost. It, it, it wasn't glued. It's not glued. It's okay. Um, you can put one, you can put it back on there if you want, or you can not. It's just... The, the ESP 32s, when they're coming soldered from the factory in China, they're soldering on two strips or four strips really of headers. You only need three. So we've been sending a blank, uh, female header strip to just cover those pins, but you don't have to have it. If it falls off and you can't find it because it went under the couch or something, that's fine. This is really a tight fit these days too. Getting this, getting this on here is a tight fit. So if you have to, uh, manhandle it a little bit or woman handle it a little bit, then, uh, then do that. And, and you might have to just kind of wiggle things around a little bit to get that on and off there. But that's, that's how you just pull it off. And it's okay if this female 
receiver strip there is missing. Okay. Sarait, Sarait. You guys remember that guy? What was his name? All right. We're going to strip these back a little bit more just because they weren't stripped too much. The best thing to do here is uh, put little, uh, if you had something, uh, you could put little tips on there. Uh, to give it a little bit more something to grip to so it doesn't fall out of these uh, connectors, but it'll work okay like this. Okay. Da, 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 da. Now, connecting here, we've got ground in the first one. So we'll put the ground. This says uh, a red, and then it's always it's always positive, and then data, and then ground. So we're going to connect the positive to the positive side. That's over here. It's this far one. Get in there. Okay, all right, and then we're going to use the the GPIO 16, which is this pin. Oops, sorry, out of frame. It's this one, so that's GPIO 16. Bit out of focus. Let's see if we can fix that. Thank you, sir. Good enough. Let's let's fix that. Basically, we just need to stop. Oh, oh, I see. It's a bit out of focus because I'm moving it. If I set it down, it stays focused. Maybe if I just kind of split the difference and adjust the focus. Okay. Okay. Ooh, bang. Sorry. What is this module's name? This module's name is a Dig Uno. It's a Dig Uno um, created by the LED maestro, <laughs> Quindor. Okay. So we're going to tighten this back up here. Okay. That's the data. And now the ground goes on here. All right. Okay. So ground, Let's double check our connections. Ground is to ground. Data is to data and power or positive is to positive. Okay, great. So we can put this back on here now. And this is what I was saying. Sometimes this is a little bit tight, a little bit tricky, but, and the fuse kind of bumps into that, which is good. We don't want, we want this to not be accessible once you've got this thing connected here. Um, okay. So that's that. Great. So now we can plug our LEDs in and then we can turn it on. Let's make sure that those are not exposed. They're not. Okay. Now we can turn on. Oh, and there's our LEDs lit up. And I will tell you right now, it's drawing 0.34 amps. 0.34 amps. Hey, Nicholas, how's it going, man? Um, when I lift it off the table, gotcha. Okay. All right. So let's do this. We're going to go back here. We are going to, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to uh, test the, the, uh, power consumption of these LEDs, okay? So we're gonna go to the uh, color picker and we wanna pick, oh, I know why it looks funny because I've got this on, I was like, where's white? <laughs> Is white not a thing? So we're gonna pick white, okay? So now my LEDs are white, okay? It's at 0.55 amps, 0.55 amps. I'm gonna turn the brightness up. It's at 0.81 amps. Now, if I go back here, oops, if I go in here to LED preferences, remember we set this to 1,000. So if I change this now to, say, 700, it should dim the lights. I know, oh, can you guys see? And, okay, change it to 700. Now we're going to dim the lights. Boom. See that? And when I look over there, it actually dims them even more than that because my, and maybe it's, maybe the calibration's off on my, um, Oh, it's a calculated thing. That's why too, because they're actually using less than what it thinks they're using. But anyways, it's down to 0.58 amps is what it's using. So let's go back in here again. We're going to take this back up to an amp, one whole amp. Okay. Save it. The lights got brighter. I don't know if you saw that on my face. The lights got brighter. And uh, 
Yeah, it's a it grand total. So 50 of these on max brightness is 0.8 amps. Okay, 0.8 amps. And then if we turn them off, we'll get just the controller, which is 0.21. So it was point, maybe it was 0.81. And the controller by itself, just the controller is 0.21. So that means we have 50 LEDs. This is going to be math in public. 50 LEDs. Okay. And they are drawing a grand total of uh, 0 0.6 amps, right? So divide that out. And what is it? 30? 30 milliamps? Amps per LED. So 0 0.6 divided by 50. Hey, Google, what's 0 0.6 divided by 50? 6 divided by 50. Oh, it's 12. Great. 0 0.12 milliamps. So these LEDs, these pixel LEDs, we've calculated it. And at max brightness, at max brightness, 0 0.12, 0 0.12, uh, 0.012 amps, right? Help me out. Am I doing that right? And I triggered. <laughs> Controller was 0.16 earlier, now 0.21. So lights are drawing 0.4 even when they're off. Oh, good, good call, C sharp worm. Good call. Good call. Good, good remembering. Good job remembering. Math is off. 0 0.05. Math is math is hard. I, I mess it up all the time. Chips draw current when the LEDs are off. Yeah, so so do these. And breathe. <laughs> um, anyway, so my point there is just it's it's lower than we usually think. Right? All addressable LEDs do, since each LED has a tiny controller in it. Um, I love that you guys are helping somebody, and I appreciate that, because I've, I've not followed along, so I'm going to leave it to you guys to, to sort out that fellow's problem, and I appreciate it. Let's set, up the, let's set up the relay. Let's set up the relay on these. Um, trying to think of how best to do that. Oh, I know what to do. I know what to do. So now that we've figured out that I can set these, uh, I can have these LEDs. Let's let's look at what it draws when it does a an effect, right? So let's turn them on again. Their max brightness. We are at 0.81 amps, but we're gonna do an effect. Let's do something that uh, is um, probably pretty low, like colorful or color winkles. I know it's color twinkles, but I like color winkles. So when I put color winkles on, it's drawing maybe 0 0.3, 0 0.28, 0 0.29, 0 0.27, 0 0.31 I saw. So 0 0.3, 0 0.31 amps is it. And again, if I turn it off, it's 0 0.21. So it's 0 0.1 amps for 50 of these LEDs at max brightness running color winkles. So I'm I'm doing this over and over again, kind of beat to death, and I and I, I don't I don't want to encourage people to not be safe with these things, but I want to, but I want to be realistic in looking at what is the actual current draw. It's actually a lot lower than we generally calculate, right? So, anyways, I like proving that point over and over and over and over and over again. Okay, now we got to get not fall into the. Um, not fall into the trap of just playing with the LEDs for the rest of the time because it's so fun. Yeah, and this is 0 0.25, 0 0.25. So this is uh this is lake the lake effect, <laughs> the lake effect. If you lived up near the Great Lakes, or maybe that's any lake, but we definitely talk about it by the Great Lakes. Uh, the lake effect at about fifty percent brightness. It looks so cool. It's mesmerizing, but it's drawing like. 0 0.04, 0 0.04 amps. <laughs> so it's barely anything. Barely, barely, barely anything. Okay, turn those off. Now let's work on getting a relay hooked up here. What I was going to say is, um, because I was talking to somebody earlier about uh, using, actually even using one of these power supplies. This is just a regular old junkie. Um, this might even be like a dollar store uh, power supply. 
I wouldn't recommend you, you know, you can't do this if you're going to run a bunch of lights on your house, but if you're going to do a small little project and you've got a tiny little string of lights like this, uh, you could just use something like this. You know, you don't have to buy just, it, it, it might say in WLED, oh, you, you need a three amp power supply, right? This says, this says a 1.5 probably because of the, what I had it set to down here. Even if we did this to 12 milliamps. So it says with a one amp USB supply, it says I can use a one amp USB supply. So I must be able to. Okay. Supposed to be like 90% less power and off than the addressables. Might be something to look into. Kind of hard to find them. Mm. That does. I, I've not heard of those. HD 107s. Okay. Uh, all right. Let me see. What current rating is this power supply? Oh, this is a two amp power supply. Well, that's, man, that's a nice one. That's a two amp power supply. I probably have, ooh, I'm sorry. Hit my, probably have something smaller. I was going to just use a one amp power supply. Oh, this one's a three amp power supply. Gosh, do I not have any smaller ones? I guess what we could do is we could run it off of how many, uh, how much current comes out of the USB port on your computer? <laughs> dare I? Dare I attempt it? Yeah, I dare. Yeah, I dare. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. So if you want the simplest, could I use, you could use a cigarette lighter power supply and then run them in your car. Yes, you could, Orc Pride. Yes, you could, Orc Pride. How's work today, by the way? I was there. You remember I was there. Were you there when I was there? Yeah, you were there this morning. You're back already, huh? How bad is it? Orc Pride is my homie from work. I went to work this morning. I didn't even have to go to work this morning. I am such a, I am such an altruistic, giving soul. <laughs> Eric knows I'm not, so that's why it's extra funny. Um, 500 milliamps for USB 2. It sucks. Yeah, I bet it does. PC USB port's only 500. Uh, you may get a weird ground loop doing that. Battery brick. Oh, yeah, I see what you're doing. Oh, battery brick. Best for testing like this. Maybe a weird ground loop. I want to, I want to try it. Let's see if I do have a battery brick do not have a battery pack. But what I can do, here's what I will do. Here's what I will do. I will use, I will plug it into a not connected to the computer uh, USB port to mimic a, a USB port connection or at least a, a USB power supply. Okay. I'm going to mimic a USB power supply. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. That is what I'm going to do. And also the point of doing this is I want to um, connect in the uh, relay as well. So I need to set up an external, which actually this is, I should do it on the quad, huh? But I could still do it here. We could still do it this way. All right. So what I've got, what I got here, let me get you back on my camera. What I've got here is just a USB cable that I cut. Okay. Cut the USB cable. This is one of those notorious USB cables that only has two wires in it. So if you were going to try and flash a device with this USB cable, it would not work because it only has power and ground. It does not have the two uh, data wires. It doesn't have the RXTX uh, communication wires, only has power and ground. But for my case, that's perfect. I saved you immensely. No, I didn't, <laughs> but thank you. I felt like I don't help very much, so I thought I could help this morning, so I did. Okay, uh, here, anyways, here we got a USB cable connected to these, these alligator clips, and we're going to use these alligator clips to connect to, actually, we're going to connect them to the LEDs. So, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to turn off the power to the DigiUno and the LEDs. I am going to take off this controller again. Come on, baby. Come on. Okay. Take off this controller again. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to disconnect this power right here. Okay. So I still have the ground connected and you need to have the ground connected. Um, but the power is not going to be connected. The positive is not going to be connected. 
Okay. So I can put this back in here. What this will do now, this will basically, this will be powering uh, just the, there we go. Okay. This will be powering just the um, controller. It's no longer going to be powering the LEDs. Okay. The LED thingy is over here. I'm going to use this extra ground. I'm probably going to, because I'm going to have two separate power supplies. Basically, I'm going to have my bench power supply going in here, and then I'm going to have a second power supply going in over, over here. Is this going to be too confusing? No, this is because I'm doing the relay. So you have to have, if you're going to do the relay thing, let's see, do I have to do that that way? No, I don't, I don't have to do it that way. I could put the relay just in the middle here, and then you could just shut these off. But I'm going to do it this way because this is how I started doing it. <laughs> maybe we have maybe if 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 uh if it is still useful uh, we can do it with a single power supply scenario as well but we're going to start with a dual power supply scenario so if you have two power supplies one for your controller and one for your leds this is what you can do okay all right so now what i've got is i've got my controller which is getting power from my bench power supply. I have the power wire that goes to the LEDs. And then over here, because it gives you these, these extra two wires, I could use, actually, I could use this power wire too to not be confused with this one, but it won't matter. They're, they're just connected together inside here. So this wire and this wire are actually just connected inside here. This is ground. This is power. Um, ground, I can just connect. Oh, let's see. Is this going to give me grief when I go to do the relay? in the ground for the relay that should work i'm not sure we'll find out in a minute let me get my relay board yeah the five volt external is the five do we have the five volt external on the on the uno why yes we do why yes we do because it's good and tight nice chris so should I, should, would you use that? So the five volt external. Do I put a jumper on there? Quindor, I haven't used it. Let me grab a relay. You can tell me. Do I, so if I wanted to use the five volt external, do I need to jumper those two? No, because that says ground. No, definitely don't jumper those two. Do I connect my five volt external there? two DuPont pins next to the input terminal. So if I put five volts there, that will power to the controller and not the LEDs. And you can hook up the relay in front of the main power input terminal. Oh, hook up the relay here. That would go in there. And then I could hook up the relay here. Oh, I see. I see. I see. In cases with more amps, you would want the USB to power the board only and turn, yes, and turn off the large power supply. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Wading through boxes and boxes of, uh, of WLED controllers of Unos, and Quads, Pixel Pros. So I started for those of you who have who have bought controllers from me at multiple stages. Uh, I, we were doing all sort of envelopes, um, and then we just started getting a, a lot more variety of things and and sizes of things and stuff. So the envelopes weren't working. So now we're using almost all the time we're using little boxes, which means every you got to fold up the boxes and tape them and have them ready. Um, so that's what's on the floor over here is. There's probably 20 or 30 little boxes folded up and ready to fill uh, orders. On the quad is easier than the terminals, but on the Uno spaces wouldn't allow for the fit. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Um, let's move forward with what I got because I got it. And then we will rearrange with some different scenarios. Okay. Because I, I like that idea of, of doing it with different, different scenarios. Okay. So now I need some jumpers. Jumper, jumper. And uh the, it looks like female female jumpers is what I need. You got you got you got what I need. Oh man. Where have all the jumpers gone? Have a good time gone? I swear I I try and organize my jumpers, I really do. I really do. 
Okay, let's go see if there's some in here. Organized jumpers. All right. Okay. We're going to get... Here's a black. Oh, that's the wrong one. Jeez, I thought I had a ton of those. Female, female jumpers. Here's, these are all... These are all doubles. Yay. Okay, there's one female, female. No. Good grief. I, the problem is I use I cut them up and I use them for things and then end up with an odd number of different things. Oh, man, this is going through there. Okay, thank you for subscribing, whoever that was. We haven't done this one today. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> this is the part of the show where we watch Dr. Z's look for jumper cables. I can't believe I don't have them readily available. Clearly, we use too many. Chickens have hatched. Separating the girls from the boys. <laughs> I can't find my bolt meter. Aha! There's one. And oh, 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 come on, come on. Yes! Okay. Sheesh. All right. Now, what we've got here is a jumper that will be for five bolts. Goes on this pin back here. If it fit, yes, it will. Okay, we're going to use white for ground. Okay, right there ah. and then we decided we were going to use q4 which is right here you see that okay so so five bolts is red goes on a jumper right there goes on that pin that sticks out right there and then, and these are all marked on the board, so you don't have to memorize. You don't look at this. Yeah, you can't see it very well because I don't have a lot of light on. But five bolts is in the back, then ground, then over here on the front, you skip one, and now you've got uh, whatever pin that was, 32, right? So now we can go to our relay board. Ta da! Relay board! The relay board needs five volts. So we're going to put five volts there, like that. Ground which is here, it's gonna go right there. And then these, I believe it's always D1. Pretty sure. D1 is, D1 is the one. Right there. Okay, so that should, that should let us control the relay. How do you control the relay? Well, that's, would be a, good, that's a good question to ask. All right. Uh, now we're going to want to take, oh, actually, yeah, that's going to be all right. We're going to take another jumper here. One of these. Yep. Okay. And we're going to put uh, one into the common here in the middle. So this is going to be where the power goes in. And then our power to the board, we'll put it in the normally open so that when it's, when it's, when the relay is off, the, the power to the LEDs is off. There we go. Okay. So that's there. That's there. That's there. This goes, going to go over here. All right. Well, let's see what happens. Turn that on. Oh, the relay came on. So when I plug this in, the lights should come on. 
Hey, it worked. <laughs> All right, now let's go here and let's turn on and off the relay. So I don't know where that button is. How about that? I don't know where to turn the relay on and off. Wires everywhere. Now it's starting to look like every <laughs> Tech Turtles here. How's it going, man? Um, where do I turn on and off the relay? Do I have to set it as the button? Like, is there a effects, segments, favorites, peak sync power? Like, I would expect there to be a new button or something now that I've set it to... Right? Like, active high. But how do I turn this off? The on-off button? Really? No. <gasps> yes! Oh, that's it. I don't know if you can hear it click or not. Sweet. I see. So it, the relay is switched when the brightness is zero. Photochromax. Oh, okay. I see. That is clever. That way you don't have to have a separate button. It just automatically turns off the power and hit the power button on the main interface. Oh, what if I, if I do GPIO zero should work also, right? Yeah, it does. So here's the little, what I'm pushing with my finger here is the little button on the, on the, uh, dig, uh, dig, uh, dig uno, dig, dig, uh, <laughs> Quinn LED ESP32. If I push that, oh, that's freaking genius. Oh my gosh. I love this. I love it. I love it. Can't believe I've never played with this before. Actually, I can't. I haven't had time to play with anything, but now I'm so happy that I got to play with this. Sweet. Smoke is imminent, especially the way I have all this uh, kind of on top of itself. Something's going to touch something and bang. <laughs> when it's time for squirrels, we'll get to squirrels here pretty soon. And because I, I, I can talk about my um, the dig, 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 ESP, dig, Uno, LED, dig board. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So this is one way to wire this up. I don't think this is the way you should wire it up, though, generally. So let's let's fix it. Let's Let's change it. Oh, and let's look at this, what happens if we turn this off. Yes. Oh, and you can even see it. No, you can't see it, but I can see it. So when I turn this on, I've got my lights on, right? It's drawing 0.26 amps, 0.26 amps. When I turn this off, the LEDs go off just a second before the relay does, right? If you can see the relay, the relay has its little light here. The LEDs will go off, and then a second later, the, the indicator on the relay will go off, and the relay will click. And then when it, when that does it, it changes the amount of current that it's drawing. So here goes 0.26. Oh, and now it says 0.16. I thought it was going to be, I thought I was going to get a second of the point. Yeah, well, I did at one point. So right there it was 0.21 and then yeah, there it went. So that time it went 0.26, then it went 0.20 and then it went 0.16. So now it's 0.16 with it all off. And as who was it that said it? Come on. Come on, trying to remember. Was it C sharp worm? Which one of you guys pointed out that it was, I mean, it was Ikafar. It was Ikafar pointed out that, that it was using 0.16 with no LEDs turned on, with the LEDs turned on, but without the relay control, it was using 0.25 or 0.26. So, or 0.21, 0.21, right? Anyways, so somebody was asking about controlling these off of a battery. This would help you somewhat, especially if you had a lot of them, okay? ESP has Wi-Fi built in, external antenna, better signal. Yes, yes, yes. Does the base module have Wi-Fi? Yes, okay, good. You guys are awesome. You guys are so awesome. Okay, so let's, let's rewire this a little bit and connect it in probably what would be a better way. <laughs> uh, an actual more an actual more typical way of doing this. Not, not the way I just conglomerated this thing, whole thing together. All right. We are going to leave the relay connected. Is there a relay hat in the works, Quindor? Maybe that's, maybe that's, uh, don't tell any secrets. 
Although I don't know, man, like, gosh, we would look, I would look. So it's been great that we've actually been able to stabilize the supply in that we're not selling out constantly, even though I am a lot of Unos just days before getting more Unos. But, um, you know, there were times where we were, we were selling these out in a day or two, right? I'd post a thousand of them and they'd be gone in a weekend. Um, but we are still having our global shortage, uh, issues, which, um, are no bueno. So it, it kind of, it really sucks to try and develop a new board right now with new components. Cause I can tell you, at least on the pixel pro end, a lot of the problems that we've had are because we, um, choose components, uh, based on what's available. And then you go to start producing them. And now those components are not available and you got to go back and re and redesign again around different components. And that, I mean, how long can you do that? I guess that's not sustainable. First small project for my daughter's room after watching Dr. Video and this son. Oh, cool. So this stream is right up my alley right now. Excellent, Pablo the Gamer Dad. Excellent. What game do you play? What game do you play? Happy Father's Day. Is it Father's Day in Brazil? I can't wait. I can't wait to tell my wife it's Father's Day in Brazil. Trying to keep up, but component shortage is really, really making it challenging right now. Still no Ethernet versions. Yeah. We can't get, we can't get, uh, ESP32s, like the actual thing that sits on top here. Right. Then that where that's where we're hung up right now. I think that's what he was, what Quinter was telling me. All right. Now we are going to do things very differently. We're going to take this. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm just gonna cut this off, and then we will. Uh, we're 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 getting close to uh, done here, and then we will do a few minutes of Q and A. The Q and A, Q and A, Q and A. All right, so now we're gonna get another little, another little wire here. Yeah, that'll work. And we're going to, we're gonna put the power from the big power supply into the relay. Okay. So you take your main power, your main big relay or main big power supply power wire, positive, and put it into the middle, which is the common on the relay. Okay. That goes there. Come on, you. Come on. There you go. Then we're going to take the normally open again. And we're just going to put another little wire in there. You should use a, a similar size wire, but I know in this particular case that my load is very low. So I'm okay with this. Okay. And then I put that wire into the power in on my Dig Uno. Right there. Right there. Okay. Now. I'm going to use uh, some jumpers. I'm sorry, I keep bumping the microphone today. I don't know what clumsy I am. Now we're going to put some five volt jumpers to the USB power supply off of these external power supply pins over here. So you've got one pin that's five volts and one that's for ground. Spend 20 minutes after this organizing jumpers. <laughs> it still won't help. Next time I need them, they'll be wrong again. Okay. So now my USB dinky little power supply is providing an external power to my Dig Uno board. My main large power supply is going to the main terminals, but it's also running through the relay. And the relay is connected to GPIO 32. Okay. Is that clear? All the way around? I think. So now I can plug in the USB power. That's this guy. Okay. The relay came on, but my power supply is not on yet. So now I'm going to turn on my power supply. And now my lights come on. Great. And then if I press the onboard button again, this is just GPIO zero and it'll turn things off. And then that goes off. And then this goes back on. 
Come on, you. My fingers are too fat. Great. And then the same thing works up here. Oh, there it goes. Yep. There it goes. Yay. So then now I can tell you the LEDs by themselves without the controller are 0.3 amps. So the controller is completely cut out of this circuit as far as the, the load of the lights. The controller is being powered separately. The, the reading that I'm getting on my power supply, my bench power supply at 0.3 amps is just for these LEDs. You can even do it on the AC side to switch bigger loads. Oh yeah, for sure, right? Because this is a this this relay. You can put anything in there. You could put AC in there. It goes like to two fifty volts. Don't these go to two fifty volts AC and usually ten or more amps? This one will do at two hundred fifty volts. It'll do ten amps. At one hundred twenty five volts, it'll do fifteen amps AC. So you could switch, and that's what I would do, because. If you've got one of those big power supplies with the fan in them, uh, you know, the, the big 20 amp, so you got a 20 or 30 amp power supply and you don't want that fan to run all the time. You don't want that thing to be running all the time. You're actually going to want to turn it off on the AC side, on the input to that power supply side. So you would do the same thing. Well, you wouldn't do this, but you would have, um, you could connect this still to your power supply, but this would be on the beginning of your power supply. How would that work? Oh, you couldn't, but you, you would have to have a separate power supply for your controller, right? You would have to have a separate power supply for your controller. Cause if you turn off on the AC side of a big power supply, you're not going to get anything at all here to control the controller. If you only have the one, so you have to have a separate one for this. That is awesome. We did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. <laughs> could you put a Shelly one for the power supply? Absolutely. Yeah. You could put a Shelly one. You could put a Tuya switch. You could put whatever you want. <clears throat> any, any smart relay. But the nice thing is you don't need the, the, the reason, a good reason to do this. Thank you, Valkov. How you been? <clears throat> um, the reason for doing it this way is you only need by, by controlling the relay with the ESP or with the Dig Uno control board is then you only have one Wi-Fi client. You're not adding a Wi-Fi client. You've already got this one connected. Might as well use an extra pin for an extra function. So very cool, right? Very cool. We have four good LED questions at the bottom of the ask channel you should look at first. Thank you. Gosh, sir, good enough. I don't pay you enough. <laughs> I don't pay him at all. He's just a great dude. I should pay him. All right, where are we at? Uh, let's go to this. The, the channel for the live stream questions. All right. <laughs> WLED questions. Here we go from Jesse. Jesse Fabro. What would cause WLED to keep losing all my settings, such as effect colors and segments? Um, so, so you're putting in, so is Jesse, you still here? So Jesse is just don't connect AC to the Digi Uno. Amen. Um, so Jesse is putting in like effects, I'm assuming like, you know, setting up segments and then they're not being saved when you restart. What controller are you using, Jesse? Does the controller like does the controller not have a good not have memory or something or does it is it? Um, trying to think of where, because there is like a reset to reset to factory stuff in here somewhere. Factory reset. You don't want this. Make sure that's not checked. Um, but I think that would not be checked by default every time. Um, is it saving anything? Is it saving your W is it saving your um, Wi-Fi functions and stuff? Or do you just mean when you turn it off and turn it back on? Because uh, 
it is set to now it, it shouldn't not save oh you know what wait what version are you using that's probably another thing jesse are you using an old version of wled because uh the the saving presets well if you're using segments and you're using a new enough version right but it used to when when there used to be a time where we only had one preset that would save segments and it was it was preset 16 you, if you were going to do segments you had to use preset number 16 but that's been a while ago that that went away so um i'm going to assume that you're running the newest version of wled if you're not then do and uh that may have been a uh, part of the problem what else can you guys think of what else uh what other reasons might there be for his segments and things to not be saved each time Front LED has a Shell A power supply. Latest version of WLED is a bug in the segments that got fixed in 12, I believe. Okay, good. The latest version is version 12, 0 0.12. 0 0.12 is the latest version. This is the beta, but, um, oops. Yeah, this is the latest full release, 0 0.12. Set the segments, then you must save it as a preset. Oh, maybe that's it, Liddy. Okay, you Liddy got it. Um, maybe that's what's happening is once you set the preset, so let's say you go to, uh, so if you have, let's say we add a segment, we're gonna do, oops, we're gonna do segment zero is gonna be the first 10. And then uh, the next one is gonna be, um uh well whatever we'll, we'll we'll do like this oh turn them on connection failed oh dear. oh dear what have i done okay and then this new one oh wait didn't save oh cuz i didn't hit the check mark that's that's part of it too so start led stop led you got to hit this to save it Okay, uh, this one then saved there. And then this one, we're going to go from 40 to 50. And we're going to save that. So now we've got three segments, right? So we've got three segments. So let's see now. Let's make sure that one's saved. Okay, so now I've got three segments. Okay, if I restart it, will it go away? Save and reboot. Yep, pretty sure, because they all just went back to yellow. Your stop and start segments are on the same LED. Yep, they all went away. They all went away. So that's probably it. So then, so let's do it again. So we're going to go here. We're going to go 0 to 10. And then what Jolly Roger was telling me is uh, 11 to 40. And save that. And then uh, 41 to 50. Save that. Okay. Oops. No. This was 0 to 10. They can overlap. I don't remember why. Okay. So 0 to 10, 11 to 40, 50. And now we need to save this, right? We need to have all these together, create a preset. Call it SIGs <laughs> and save it. Okay. Now, if we, if we restart, save and reboot, see what happens. Looked in the code. It does not save segment settings. Oh, is that right, Phil? It doesn't save segments? Yeah, it saves them as a preset. You're right. There you go. Thank you, Phil. Yep, save it as a preset. Yep, there you go. There you go. Probably is what you said, or his chip has a defective VPROM. Set the segments, you must save it as a preset. Yep, everybody got it. Good job, everybody. My LED in front of my house of a Shelly 240 volt in my power supply. So as you say, PSU and ESP are only on when I turn on the Shelly one. That's a good, that's a good way too. Okay. Wow, we saw we we answered that question. We fixed it. I bet you that was it. That was it. Probably just wasn't saving it as a preset, so it was going away. Sweet, Luis Esquedalara. Where do I configure 
that I can be communicated on X lights because X lights I go to output to the lights icon and the light sequence does not work. Thanks, Doc. Thanks, Doc. Thanks, Doc. <laughs> um, oh boy. Uh, Tech Turtle, you here? Or any of my other pixel heads? Um, Lewis has a, a great question about X lights and, and WLED. And I know that things have changed since I played with X lights last. Um, you did have to go to the sync preferences and set up stuff right here in this. Uh, uh, E131, multicast, the universe, all that stuff. Um, is that relay board on the product link sheet? I don't think so. I don't think so. This is just a generic one. We could find one on it on Amazon real quick. Um, the question about X lights is where does he do the settings so that his WLED can communicate to X lights? He says in X lights, I go to the output to lights icon and the light sequences do not, so they don't show up. So I think, uh, I think the, the, the link between X lights and his WLED controller is not being, is not being made. So. How do I say it, Arun? Namaste? Namaste. <laughs> Hope you didn't miss much. You missed everything. But that's okay. We're glad you're here. Thanks for keep, thanks for coming. Um, yeah, I'm not going to fire up X lights because it's been too long and I don't have the latest version. And so whatever I might see in the interface and such would be wrong. So we're just going to... I will refer that question, Luis, to the pixel heads. Yeah, and that's what I'm thinking, Phil. Phil says, did you add the controller correct? I said it right. Yes. <laughs> um, that my, my guess is, is somewhere there, Luis. Uh, it, it's, there's the link between the, uh, WLED controller and the, and the, um, X lights is, is not there. So whether it's a, an IP address issue or a port issue or something else, and I don't know because, um, I haven't played with it in too long. Maybe this is the year I get back into. It. So we're, oh, we're, we're one for one or one for one for two. We failed on that one answering uh, Lewis's question. Blue Radio 22 says my WS2812 strips, did you know in WLED are all of a sudden only doing effects every 10 pixels used to be individual pixels. Any idea why every 10 pixels? Okay. That's interesting. I wonder what settings could have caused that. Something like segments comes to mind. Maybe maybe it's uh, repeating um, because it thinks you only have. It thinks you only have. That wouldn't work. No. What else could that be, fellas? It wouldn't be broken. Like it, the clock mode is enabled. Ooh. Quindor says, check if clock mode is enabled. So LED preferences, that would be, where would that be now? Would that be because you have this maybe? Or where's, where's clock mode? I've never had that one. Presets, gamma, brightness, crossfade, timer, advanced. How can you turn on and off the segments with transition? I think we asked that last time and I don't think like making it fade in between, uh, you know, the cross cross fade or whatever transitions like this. I don't know if this is it or not, Arun, but maybe. Real time, receive UDP, real time, check. E131 selected, no multicast, start universe one. These are my settings for getting give the worst thing with XX. Thank you, Nicholas. I know that there's been some update in the in the the X Lights guys and and Air Cookie have been working together to make it easier to control a WLED uh, controller with X Lights so that you can have all the function of WLED, but if you want to do sequences and and light shows and stuff, you can quickly and easily do that by turning on X lights, but you might not want X lights on all the time um, just for special shows and things, but I don't know. Crossfade, for some reason that settings doesn't work for segments. Oh, really? That may be just something to put in for like a request or, or uh, an issue 
Everoon, and see if that's something that Eric and the guys can work on. Clock overlay is in the time and macros menu. Okay, let's check it out. Oh, clock overlay. So it thinks that there's a it thinks there's a clock. It thinks that it's copy all my presets from one to another. Oh man, I did that one time, Morel. How did we do that, guys? Um. So there was a way. Now I don't remember what the easy way was. How do you? I, I shouldn't be jumping ahead. I, I Sir Good Enough is going to slap me. <laughs> Feature request. Yeah, there you go. Um. Uh. The. Yeah. The whole thing about the repeating pixels. I don't know. Do not know. Some slash JSON. Okay. And then I don't remember where you paste it. Um, I think you could go, I mean, you could go like back and forth between your two controllers here and you say, okay, I want, let's say I've, let's, let's set a preset, whatever, just create a preset. Preset is, is the, whatever. Okay. It's a preset. If you go in here, you can see what the preset is, right? Overwrite with state. Refresh the page to see this. Okay. So you can grab this here and you can copy it from one to the other. Don't use current state and paste it in. So you could do that. That's one, that's, that's one method. You can just switch back and forth and basically copy the things out of one, copy things out of one controller, uh, and into the other. And it makes it pretty easy with, uh, the instance list to switch back and forth between them. Um, I think you may be able to just take, you may be able to take that information that was in the slash JSON and copy that into the API box as well. So you, whoa, <laughs> you can, you can put that in here as well, I believe, but I'm, I'm not a hundred percent on that. I thought there was a way, there was another way to download them and upload them slash edit maybe. Okay. Yes. Choose a file upload. There we go. There we go. Okay. So you can create a file. Let's see. Presets JSON. There you go. Presets JSON. Download. Here we go. Here we go. This is it. This is the, this is the other one I was thinking of. So let's say you spent a lot of time and you've got a ton of presets and you don't want to do them one at a time. Like I just did. Um, thank you very much. C sharp worm. Perfect. So you can go here, you can go to the presets JSON file. That's this bunch of stuff here. You can right click and download that file. Okay. Download it wherever you want. I'm just going to put it on the desktop for now. Okay. Then you go to your other controller. So in this case, I'm going to go to controller number 38. Oops, not 138, just 38. And go to slash edit. And then I can upload a file. So if I choose a file, I go to my desktop where I just downloaded the presets JSON, open and upload. It should overwrite that presets with this presets. I think that's what just happened. I don't know. Did it? Maybe. <laughs> so I think that would work. I don't know if it did or not. <laughs> okay. I'm going to answer some more questions and then it's going to be time to go. All right. Um, Tommy, Tommy Runo says I'm building WLED for my friend, but he does not live close and I need to send it to him. My question is how can you configure a WLED to router that there is static IP or name already there? So you want to put in the static IP and stuff in a, in the, uh, I don't know if you put that stuff in the JSON or not. Um, 
Well, I, what settings can, what settings, this is the configuration. So you might be able to do this same thing. Yeah, look, here's the name. Uh, Wi-Fi sleep. Here, yep, here's the stat, here's the IP address. Yep. There you go. Right there. We just did it. Woohoo! Tommy, did you get that? <laughs> so you go to, you set it up. You can set it up on a controller of your own or whatever. And then you can download this config, cfg.json. Download that and it will have all the settings in it. And then he should be able to upload that um, and put it on through the same slash edit menu. Please tell me if I'm doing this totally wrong. Reboot, reboot, reboot. That's true. That's a good, that's a good point. If you, you, you probably have to reboot it for the effects to take effect <laughs> for the presets. You think you saw passwords are good enough. You think you did? You think you did? You may have. No, actually I didn't. I, I, I think it hid the password. Um, cause I looked, I've become sensitive to these things. It does say my SSID, but it doesn't put the password in. It says SSID and then it says PS, PSKL8. So it must have, it must have, um, saved it somewhere else. So it won't, it won't put the password in unless you, unless you manually write it in right here and then save it probably or something like that. Did the hard way by unplugging it, it still exited, it existed, but rebooting it by software fixed it. Yes. Have I played with the playlist setting yet in the beta version of WLED? I have not. I have not. Sounds amazing. All right. So answer that question. Boom. Um, okay. When, where can we see the Hubit TV show? Uh, the Hubit TV show is going to be on DIY Network. I don't know when yet, but should be soon. They are doing the editing. All of the filming is done. It will be on the DIY Network. And if you look for Building Off the Grid, Building Off the Grid. So here's the name of the show, Building Off the Grid. Now, episodes... I. It doesn't, this doesn't list all the seasons. Like this goes through season six. Um, so there are more seasons to get some of the newer stuff. Like we're on season like 11. You actually, I think the best way to do it. Um, and I hate, cause it doesn't make, it doesn't make me any money, <laughs> but if you go to Amazon, you can, um, you can buy the episode. So building off the grid, we don't want season eight. I think we're on season, um, gosh, which season we're on season 10, I think or season 11. So season 11, and then the, here's all the episodes so far. Um, the last one came out in June and ours is going to be, you know, coming up. Ours, will, ours will be on this season. It'll be, you know, one or two down here. Ooh, a watch party. Oh, we could have a watch party. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. When it comes out, we'll do that. Okay. We'll do this. We'll schedule a watch party. And, uh, that way, even if I don't know what will happen with copyright, we'll see. Um, but we'll schedule a watch party through Amazon. It's like two bucks. Like if you wanted to just buy that one episode, it's like two bucks to buy it, to buy one episode. Um, Three bucks if you buy an HD. And then it will also replay on the Discovery Channel um, on Thursday nights at like six or seven o'clock. I can't remember. I, I don't know for sure. I think we're on the last episode of the season, but no, actually, we're, we're probably not the last episode of the season anymore because they, I know they're filming another episode nearby us up in, uh, in Idaho. Um, so that one will be after us. Twitch is owned by Amazon. Now you can stream and watch party. It's legal and all. Yes. <laughs> Quinn, we're going to bed. Adios, amigo. Thanks, man. 
Okay. So there you go. I will try and uh, keep everybody updated as soon as I know some things about when it's going to air because I don't even know yet. All right. We're going to try another one. Discord Tech Dork. Uh, any advice on how to pick the right type of permatrack, side or bottom? Oh, boy. Um, uh, so here's here's this. I'll give you my, my bit of a rundown. Most of the houses in the U.S., new, newer houses, they have a uh, an overhang that's got tin. It's like just a metal, metal tin stuff underneath there. If you put, most of us put our Christmas lights on the, on the edge there pointing down. That's just kind of old school Christmas lights. That's how they work. That's how it's been, right? Uh, they just, because that's what they did. They hung down. The hanging down is nice because you can see them from the street pretty easy. You can see them individually. And sometimes it's kind of cool to see the individual, you know, when they're different colors, flashing different colors. It's, it's kind of nice to see the distinct points of light. Um, and with pointing down and being reasonably close to the, to the house, usually it's a foot and a half or so maybe from the house, you do get some glow off the house from the, from the pixels when they're pointing down. So if you want glow off the house and to see the distinct points of light, then go pointing down. If you want to just see the distinct points of light and not get the, the, uh, glow on the house, then point them out towards the street. And a lot of the, a lot of the pixel show guys are used to having everything pointing out towards the street, right? You've got, when they set up their, their, um, mega trees or their Coro display, uh, bits or a matrix or something, it's all pointing straight out towards the street. In that case, if that's what you're going for, that would be the, the holes on the side. And then you aim them to point out towards the street. One more option that I kind of think I like in some situations, depending on your house and things, is get them pointing on the side, get the, get the, uh, the lights on the side, permatrack with it on the side, point it towards the house. Then you don't get the distinct lights, but you do get the glow on the house. So different look, probably not what everybody thinks of for Christmas lights but could be kind of cool depending on what you're looking for. Okay. So that's my advice on how to pick. <laughs> I don't know if that was, I don't know if that was helpful or not. <laughs> okay. What else we got? Scott Lindsay just drove past the Hobbit hole looking good. Oh, did you really? Awesome, Scott. Thank you, man. Thank you. I can, uh, I don't know what, oh, I, I know what I'll show you, but it won't be pixel. We can look at the camera, but it's on the inside of the house because it's set for the alarm still. Oh, I was going to do this for, was it Phil? Soft, soffit and fascia. Thank you for using the, I'm using the wrong terminology. Been a long time since I took architecture class in high school. Can't remember them words. All right. Um, so I don't want prime video. I was going to just do no digital music. Uh, come on, come on. All departments relay, relay board. Um, so the simple, simple relay board. So here's some, this is this, these are simple too. So something like this, this would work. And it doesn't, this would be, this is to set it to high activate or low activate. Looks like you've got plus minus in and then normal comp. So these would be a good one too. So somebody was asking about, um, the relay board, you, the one that I have, the one that I used is made to go on top of a dig of a, of a, a D one mini. It's supposed to be a D one mini hat. So I would def, I wouldn't say to use the one that I have necessarily. This is the same relay. It's just configured differently. And this one would be easier to connect with screw terminals and you can, you know, mount it easier to a, a project box or something like that. Okay. So there's, there's lots of options. Here's another one that's uh, about half and half, right? You've got, uh, here you've got jumpers and on that side, you've got screw terminals. So that would be another, another one you could use. Um, this one looks like it's the same, but it's a pack, right? Yeah. It's got jumpers on this end, screw terminals on that end. So any of those will work. Any of those will work. It's the same jumper box. An octocoupler on there just to make sure it works with three volts. Gotcha. 
Arun is for boys and Aruna is for girls. It means Dawn, but Dawn itself sounds more like a girl's name than a boy's name. Okay, here we go. And one, let's see, we got that, we got that. Let's do, what else we got here? I thought about powering the USB-C goes up to 100 watts now. Awesome. Any cool new projects coming up? Maybe. Let's talk about that in a second. Any cool new projects? So this is for Father Time. I know Father Time is probably gone. He he popped in at the beginning, and I haven't seen him in the chat, so maybe he's not uh, maybe he's not uh, still watching. But and I can't spoil too much of the Hobbit hole stuff. Um, but I will show you. Well, first I'll show you the Hobbit hole because this is a cool picture, and I can show it to you because I feel like it. There it is. If you drive by the house, that's what you see. And right now, the saw this sod is dying again, which is fine. Um, we kind of expected that. But the reason that I wanted to pull this up was because of things that are not here. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. So, a couple things to show Father Time. Here's here's this one's for you, Father Time. He says, "How's my bug doing?" This is my Frankenstein together leaf battery with the DIY BMS version four system attached to it. Um, I think it's an 18. Uh, maybe it's not 18. What was it? I thought I saved it. Where's my BMI, DIY BMS? Um, there is, well, I can show you the, the picture of it anyways. Uh, this is basically all those modules. So this is a, a screenshot. For, oh, 76. That's it. 76. Okay. Not 18. 76. Now this is, it's not a very strong signal, so that may not work either. But basically this is giving me the voltage for each of those modules. Um, this is actually giving me the voltage for each of two modules. So my total voltage, uh, well, the maximum for each one of these should be four point. That should be the high limit. I don't know what that's about. 87. This should get up to 96 volts total, but this is, uh, this is only counting half of them. I'm not sure what's going on here because it, it should go up to 96 volts total. But anyways, <laughs> I was on my way saying it was 76. <laughs> um, anyways, that's the interface for it. Um, and this is pretty cool, I think, that it's working. So it is it is on my network, even though it's not working right now. And it's got, you know, these are set to... Uh, limit the charge voltage. So now I can actually hook this up to a 96 volt charger and charge it. So that's what I'm hoping for. Do I know the difference between the blue relays and the solid state relays? Uh, solid state relays, solid state relays, um, they're nice cause they don't make noise. Um, they don't have any, I don't remember what the other, they don't have any, um, whatever moving parts, but, uh, my understanding was that they can fail. The solid state relays can, can fail. Daddy. Yes, baby. Um, was just asking if you were yeah, I'm almost done. Okay. We're having okay. Great. 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 Um, so C sharp worm, as far as any cool new projects coming up, this one is, this one is uh, high on the list of, of cool projects. It's not really that new. Um, and then I've been playing a lot with, uh, with my Luciferin still, and I still am going to do uh, a video about Luciferin. Poor guy. Um, every time David, every time I get close, he's like, Oh, I'm going to do another, I'm going to do another update. And I go, Oh, well, if you're going to do an update, then I'm just going to wait. <laughs> um, but anyways, it's Firefly Luciferin and Glowworm. Um, it's a great project. It's for, it's for, um, ambient LEDs or whatever you call them, bias lighting behind your, behind your computer. So it's PC and Linux only. Um, it doesn't do like a, a DVD player or Xbox or something, but it works really well and it runs off an ESP 8266. You can use a 32, 
But from what he was telling me, the 32s are having more trouble. And I actually think I'm, I actually think I'm seeing that because I've been really trying to get it to work as the, as a Pixel Pro, you know, uh, device or it would be a good function for a good use for a Pixel Pro. But, um, it's, it's struggled a little bit. So that's probably why. Okay. And I don't know what this question, sir, good enough. Let's see. Uh, anyone got Android TV and Hyperion working for everything, not just YouTube and the home dashboard on TV. We have TV aerial and channels on the TV. Um, Martin, is there a way? So you've got, you've got separate inputs for your aerial channels. If there was a, if there, you have to digitize those somehow. Maybe you've, maybe there are, maybe there are HD digital aerial things now, right? This is the 21st century, whatever. Um, I'm just thinking if you, if you can, well, I guess, how do you have it wired up? Capture card for the RPi4. Yeah. HDMI splitter. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta digitally capture that signal somewhere. So a splitter would do it. A capture card would do it because you're doing, you're doing Hyperion directly off of an Android TV channels are built in. I think it's the DRM. It could be. Yeah, it really could be Martin. It really could be. I know that the DRM stuff is, is, is a real, a real pain in the butt for these systems. And I, I found that with Luciferin. Oh, even with, I can't remember if Hyperion did it as well. Some browsers and some games wouldn't let you do it. You had to do, um, Brave or, or Firefox, I believe would do it too. Oh man. Sorry, Alex. Real dynamite. Hate and home kit add-ons. Sorry, man. I can use the Pi for the Xbox, etc. Yeah. So it's just not working for those channels. It must be some DRM stuff. That's really sucky. That's really sucky. All right. This is going to be the last question. We're going to watch this little video. Oh, look at that. <laughs> wow, that's a really fancy bug, though. Cause, so what he's got is a bug that's a lot newer than mine. Because I... Oh, that's, that's awesome. That is awesome. Um, so with my, with my goal with our, with the bug eventually is to get like, if I get, if I can go zero to 60 in like five seconds, I know that's not super fast, but if I could get zero to 60 and somewhere in there, five seconds ish, I'd be super, super happy. And I doesn't need to go faster than 60. The engine swap out in a day. Yeah. I, I, I'm, so my, my process for this is I'm going to try this, but this volt, this battery and assuming that this battery's current output is going to be a lot better than the battery that I had previously. So that by itself should be enough to get the car to go faster. If that's true, then great. I've got more of these battery modules. I can just extend the, the size of this battery pack. So I get a little more range and I'll stick it at 96 volts. And if I can go fast enough with this and that motor that I've got in it, motor controller, then I'm done. I'm happy. I'm partly assuming that it's not going to work out that way. And I think that, uh, it's going to maybe need more voltage. So I'll try and I can add some more modules here. And instead of 96 volts, I can go to whatever I want, basically. Um, zero to 60 in one minute. <laughs> um, so if I need to, I may still have to switch out the motor and stuff. If I did the next, um, the next thing I would do if I'm going to, um, do a, uh, you know, make a major shift or major change with my bug, it's going to be this, um, this guys, these guys, Thunderstruck Motors, they sell, um, leaf modules. Like you can do a, you can buy a leaf motor and a motor controller that will replace the leaf motor controller. So I could just get, I think it's like three for maybe three grand. 
it's not cheap, but it's better than the Tesla motors. Like if you go to EV West, the, that whole kit will cost you like seven grand. So for 3000, I can get the, the leaf motor with their motor controller. And I think even the transaxle for the leaf. I don't know if I would want it, but I could get it. Um, and then the battery pack from the leaf is a thousand and I could just use that and basically just take the, the main drive components of a leaf and put that in the bug. And that would be good enough. That would totally be good enough. I don't, it doesn't need to be a, a Tesla for goodness sakes. <laughs> All right. Anything involving Guy Martin is gold. Awesome. All right, guys, let's, uh, that was a fun stream. Uh, that was a fun stream. I'm, I'm glad I took my nap ahead of time and I got charged up. And now we're going to call the kids up. It'll become a Nissan Beetle. <laughs> we did take, uh, we did take Zach's bus to get it repaired by a guy that does bugs, uh, does buses and stuff because we tried to get it running and it wasn't, it wasn't working out for us. So we want to get it Who actually is running. What, is that that's, it's in my, yeah, that's in the garage. Mm. It's in the garage. Right now? All right. Yeah, right now. What is that for? Well, it's not live. I recorded it last night. What is that for? It's a battery for the bug. Oh. All right. Who, how are we going to sign off? Should we sign off like our heads are sunburned? Ready? Okay. Ow. As oh, always. Oh, oh, thanks, oh, Ow, for watching. Ow, oh, ow. Oh. Till next time. Ow, ow, ow. Adios. <laughs> Dawson got a mohawk and then went to football practice without a helmet and burned his head. <laughs> uh, I went to the lake. I went to the lake. Oh, that's true. He went skiing and stuff. All right. Anyways. Skiing? No, I didn't. Okay. Wakeboarding and whatevering. And that, okay. Thanks, guys. We didn't talk about the 12 hour stream. We still got to plan and execute the 12 hour, 100,000 subscriber stream. So we'll get there. We'll get there. Thanks. Thanks.